Hey guys, this is Vinay and you're watching my show, Let's Talk. The guest whom I have tonight on my show is someone who makes people look beautiful. He's got this unique pair of eyes which sees beauty and transforms something into unbelievable on screen. He's none other than the celebrity photographer, Venkat Ram. Hi Venkat, Hi. welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for taking time and being on the my show. My pleasure. <laughs> you know, I read this somewhere about you that um, like anyone, you went into the engineering. Yeah. You started studying that in the second year, you decided to give it, uh, give it up and then yeah. take up photography. And back then, it must have been really hard. Yeah, I mean, uh, because to, to, to cut short a professional uh, education, yeah. I mean, and then get into something creative was never encouraged at that point of time because they just worried that whether creative field will will be able to sustain you in terms Correct. of bread and butter. Uh, but what happened was I, I realized it was not my cup of tea, engineering, so I I quit. What I mean, engineering were you doing? I was doing production. I was fully into applied mechanics, thermodynamics, <laughs> and engineering drawing and stuff like that. And then I quit. I mean, yeah, it was a tough thing to suddenly say, I'm quitting, you know, yeah. and uh, because what happens is a lot of uh, your contemporaries, I mean, all your classmates are all doing going, their engineering and so <laughs> to quit something and get off at that point of time was a tough decision. And do you remember when you went and broke the news to your family? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. What, and it, there what was, did they tell you? Pretty chaotic because, you know, what they say is, I mean, you must have fallen into bad company or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Somebody's Influence. not advising you the right thing and things like that. But I wouldn't blame them because photography was was not a profession to be looked up or, you know, uh, it wasn't really accepted as a profession at that point of time. So I guess they had their, their uh, you know, the way they were thinking was right from their point of view. And back then, in terms of photography, was there enough uh, knowledge to gain the technicalities and the stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, see, what is happening at that point of time, it was, it was, the digital age is yet to come in. So I'm talking about late 80s, early 90s. So everything was manual and stuff like that. So of course, your printing and processing and, and then your equipment, uh, it's very difficult to procure equipment and even to get uh, any kind of information about new technology was difficult because you need to rely on someone in the US, some relative somewhere yeah. to send you a brochure which would reach you a couple of months later. <laughs> so the thing is no internet. So always accessing information was a big issue. And even if you have to uh, try and, you know, get into libraries and stuff, you know how it is. They have some some books which are like 1940s and And you used and to go 50s. and read them. I still go and because at the end of it, the processing printing was the same, the chemicals yeah. and things like that. So. Wherever you could, you, you would go and, you know, uh, pull out books and try to see how much of information that you could gather. So but that you had the conviction back then to take it up so seriously and make it your profession. Yes, because I was very sure because I wanted to get into photography. But, but, but the thing is, I really never knew whether it would be uh, something that I'll, I'll be able to sustain as far as money is concerned. It was yeah. more of the passion. I love doing it, so I just want to do it. So today people look back and say, okay, maybe you decided then because of the money. I said money was that never a criteria. Was <laughs> you didn't even think Nothing, about it. yeah. It was just out of pure interest and passion that I wanted to do it. And then did you have a plan B if it didn't work out? No, I didn't have a backup plan at all. No. In fact, uh, uh, that was the only thing I could do and because I didn't have too much of expectations in terms of uh, money, you know, see that is the issue because most of them, the moment you think of anything, you, you immediately think of how much can you make in what you do. But if you don't have that and if you're just doing it because you like it and it, it's very different. So there's, there's no point of time you get dejected because, you, you know, there's no money in it. You, you, know, you don't get, you get dejected when you don't get what you want in the sense that the right kind of shot or in terms of your creative, you know, uh, what you want to achieve. That gives you a heartburn, but, but, but not because of the money that you're not making. And, you know, now when we look at photography, there is like food photography, portraits, landscape, yeah. wild photography and stuff like that. Back then, what were you thinking of? See, becoming? at that point of time, uh, it was more of product photography, industrial photography. Uh, people and model thing came in a little later because what used to happen at that point of time was uh, if you want to advertise a television or, or, or a washing machine, what they would want you to do is shoot a washing machine in all its glory 
try to make it as as you know as interesting <laughs> as much as you can to make it look like a NASA uh, spacecraft or something like that. We've done all that, so light it up and shoot the inside of it, or or even if it's a television. Uh, then what happened was late 90s, the trend changed where uh, they started using celebrities to propagate their their so it's brand. Old, yeah. yeah. So what happened was the product became small. And the person who is uh, who is supposed to advertise for it, who is endorsing it, yeah. becomes the picture. picture. So if you take any ad, you see the celebrity there is the bigger the thing. Whereas the whether it's a washing machine or a car becomes small. Yeah. So, so that change took place late 90s and early 2000s. So it went into more into people photography. That's how that's how it went. And also, you would have seen a distinct change in terms of once Kodak was something that was like a rage. You know, you guys, you, we go and take pictures, you go and print it out, and now it's completely gone. And in a span of three, four years, that completely changed with digital coming in. Yeah, that was late, uh, the 90s. Yeah. What happened was, I did a calendar for Kodak uh, 2002, I think. Uh, first time in South India, they asked me to do a calendar, and I did the calendar. But the thing is, I, I don't think they expected that kind of uh, speed in which the digital technology yeah. will take over film. So, in fact, in, in fact, when digital came in, even I was thinking twice because because they were selling cameras at five megapixels and it was costing a lakh and a half and two at that point of time. Wow. Ten mega, ten megapixel was not even heard. Of. <laughs> so you can imagine. So I was never really convinced with digital at that point of time. I would, I would, I would any day uh, prefer uh, transparency film or a negative film to that. So only around 2005. You know, the technology kind of, you know, improved and then, of course, digital just took over. And now yeah. what we see is uh, everybody on the road, mm. their phones have cameras, yeah. everybody will go and pick up a DSLR yeah. and everybody thinks that they are a photographer. There's nothing wrong because they are photographers, yeah. end of it. But I feel good about it is because uh, if I was a chef or a doctor or anything, I won't see people, all of them cooking. Or if I was a physician, <laughs> I wouldn't say everybody, uh, what you call advising the patients or uh, yeah. telling people what to take. But photography, like, there's no one who's not shot a picture. Exactly. I mean, there's no one. I mean, if you, if, you, if you have thousand people in front of you, have any one of you shot pictures? Well, everybody shot pictures <laughs> and they've been shot. So there's one, one particular thing which is like taken on, you know, worldwide, irrespective of w regions, whatever. It's reached, photography has reached that extent where from your selfies to, you know, it's, it's just taken over. And it's nice to see everybody shooting and everybody knows how to shoot, yeah. when to shoot. Online modules yeah, and stuff all like that. Yeah, all that stuff. So everybody's very conscious about it. And they all know how to look good in a, the angles. In which, <laughs> earlier, I remember <laughs> me telling the model what to do. But now they all know they're the best side of the face. <laughs> Which should the be in front of the camera, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's nice to see that. Wonderful. The person who's shot almost all celebrities here in South India and across India in conversation with Venkat, we're going to be right back. Conversation with Venkat Ram. Venkat, in your journey of uh, celebrity photo shoots, especially uh, want to emphasize on that, mm. you have shot some of the biggest names of India, okay. from Mr. Bachchan mm. to Sachin Tendulkar okay. to the Star Wars of uh, South India. Mm. First time, did you? Is there anyone that you went to shoot and you were a little intimidated and you didn't know how it would be? No, no, you were, you never. Were completely uh, confident in your confident in the sense of when you go to shoot. You're, you're very clear of what you want. And once you're clear and you've done your basic homework, I think it shouldn't be an issue because the photography is not just about shooting, it's about, I would say, you need to be a psychologist, you need to know a bit of psychology because you need <laughs> to tackle so many different people in different situations and stuff like that. So it's not just about, look here, I want to shoot. No, it's about getting them to feel comfortable and you have, uh, eyes open all around, checking if everything is fine. Is there is there any irritant factor around which would kind of jeopardize the whole thing? You make sure things are comfortable, and then 
then it works smooth, you know, because but you need to have that an eye all around, you know, in you terms be of, yeah, yeah, just to make sure it happens, yeah. And I, you know, I was reading this somewhere that mm. uh, this movie uh, where uh, Karthi was launched, yeah. Parthi Veeran. Yeah, Parthi Veeran. You yes. went all the way to shoot and you expected bright sun and yeah, exactly. there was clouds. And you have the art of adapting to what is being We given. have to, that's what, because uh, it's, when we went there, what happened was the monsoons were just setting in in Teni. So I expected it to be hot and bright and stuff, but suddenly it was completely overcast. But what happened was that added to the feel of the movie. And fortunately what happened was I added a kind of a warm tone, which was liked by the director. And what happened is they maintained the same tone when they shot the movie. So that was really nice. So, And what we would do is we would just drive around and suddenly we find something, an interesting block. We would just get off, ask Karthi and Priyamani to come in and set the whole thing, get a few people around. It'll happen like in I've 10 seen minutes. The pictures, they're like raw. Raw, raw yeah. The thing. whole idea was to make it very raw. And Karthi was a US returned person who's <laughs> done his MBA. So it's very difficult to adapt yourself to look absolutely raw. So and it was it. a challenging uh, experience and, and he did a good job. I mean, a lot of hard work. I, I think a lot of credit goes to you to make that look like that. Yeah, and the director, because he is very, very clear of what he wants in terms of what they were wearing and how they looked and stuff like that. So it's pretty interesting. And um, this season, on a serious note, mm. we are promoting awareness on cancer, okay. Chennai season. And it is very alarming to know that uh, uh, India, a lot of people in the near future will be diagnosed with cancer. The percentage of numbers will go up. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's the need of the hour. And because of a lifestyle, environment, the food that we eat, everything constitutes to something like this. So what would you want to say to people watching this in terms of creating awareness on that? See, um, I've had a lot of family members and friends who, who had cancer. And what is frightening about cancer is you never know when it's going to hit you. And that's the most, uh, even, even, even if you are careful, even if you genetically check whether you're prone to it, or even if you are uh, careful with your diets and stuff, still no way you can say you're not going to get it. So maximum that we can do is try and lead a healthy lifestyle and also check genetically whether you're prone to it and see what are the steps you need to take in terms of uh, either the lifestyle you're going to, you, you see it's not about medication it's more to do with the lifestyle, lifestyle i feel yeah. i feel a lot of people take it for granted especially that age from 18 to uh, you know 30, 30 35, 35 yeah. and by the time you're 35 40 it's too late to, to change anything to, yeah to change anything or to repair the damage which has been done over the years so at the end of it you, you you're not trying to improve it you're just trying to sustain what is left so for that I think we need to consciously uh, try our best to lead a healthy lifestyle I'm not saying quit everything but I'm just saying uh, moderate it as moderate much as possible and, and exercise a lot. I try to run whenever I can, exercise a bit whenever I can, but but I've seen a lot of people don't do it. Yeah. And uh, my request is try your best to see how much you can you can keep yourself fit. And and then then once you lead a healthy lifestyle, I think then, then it's and yeah, then it's destiny and then at least you're happy, mind and body is stable and you're happy about it and I think that happiness will, 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 will what you call, transcend to a lot of other things. Venkat, last segment of the show, yeah. quick uh, questions and quick answers for you. One advice from someone that's completely changed your life. From my parents, to take it passionately, whatever I do. And one incident that probably changed the way you look at your life again. Lots okay. of it, <laughs> Lots every of time, it? yeah, and still keeps happening. One shoot out of the lot of shoots that you've done that is the most memorable for good or bad there reasons. Are, <laughs> there are too many memorable incidents for me, actually speaking. I can't wave one against the other. Uh, one movie of the recent times that you saw, any language, that you felt that the cinematography work and the... Osage County, that was an awesome movie. Uh, one photographer anywhere in the world that you admire the photographs. Uh, Demaclia, he's a fantastic fashion photographer. And one advice to the young photographers of today's generation looking at this? Uh, don't look at money. Everything will follow. Yeah. 
uh, one uh, thing that you like to do apart from photography? What are you passionate uh, about? Wildlife. You like wildlife? You go and take wildlife photos? No, I, 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 love, I love to trek, go on trips to wildlife sanctuaries. Just to go and not as a photographer? <laughs> not as a photographer. Because wildlife photography is one of the toughest things. You I need to like can, and enjoy you need wildlife. To, you need to be, yeah, you need to be in that level where you know about animals to such an extent that you understand the behavior, then you go shoot. You just don't look at it from a tourist point of view. It's more to do with, you know, research and then shoot. One message or a word that comes to your mind when I say Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, you mm, worked with him. Stylish. Uh, Sachin Tendulkar? Mm, always uh, innovative. He is? Even during the shoot, how was the experience? Because I've seen him, I've shot him for the past 15 to 20 years. So I've seen him grow from a shy, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, a player to a confident actor. Mr. Rajinikanth? Uh, always down to earth at any point of time. And how was your experience shooting with him? My experience with him was, at times I would even pinch myself and check whether I'm shooting with him because <laughs> he's so unbelievably uh, down to earth where uh, sometimes you need to re do a, you know, recheck on yourself whether, whether things are okay, really <laughs> whether, whether you're dreaming or something like that. And, and he's always learning, you know, and, and he doesn't take anything for granted. So he's, he's very cooperative and it's nice to shoot with him. And Mr. Kamala Hassan? Mr. Kamala, I learn a lot from Mr. Kamal and uh, he, 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 he always experiments a lot. Uh, nothing is easy with him in the sense that even if you fix a frame, uh, he gets into the details of it and he loves to know what he gets involved doing. in a lot of things. Yeah, right? and how we're lighting it up and, and it's nice too. And then he comes out with some awesome suggestions because obviously with this kind of experience and stuff. Uh, Vikram? Vikram is a is a fire band. I mean, he's got so much of energy. It's amazing energy. There are times where my 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 fingers would ache, uh, clicking. Next, next. Let's do this. Let's do that. <laughs> so, literally, I my I said, give me a break. My my wow. my fingers are aching because, and the amount of energy, physical energy in terms of shoots, is fantastic. And uh, Surya. 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 Surya is. We've done a lot of shoots over the years. And um, he, whenever he plans a shoot, he gets into a lot of details in terms of whether it's, it's styling or the clothes or the, the makeup for that period, whether it's Gajani or to 24, 24 we shot recently. In a word to describe Ajit? Ajit, Ajit, I've known him for many years, <laughs> so uh, he's in style always and you know. Very stylish. Uh, very stylish and, and a very humble person. I mean, I've known him for years. And there's no change in him. He's the same right from the days he used to model. Uh, fantastic gentleman. And uh, very, very helpful all the time. And uh, one person who can carry off any look is him. Because he used to suddenly come and say, I want to try this hairstyle, I want to try that. He would just walk into the studio and do it. And he has no inhibitions about whether it look good or not. Yeah. He'll just try it. He will change his hair into brown and then come back and say, okay, That's it's not looking okay, let's change it black. He'll come back, shoot. So you need a lot of guts to do that. So yeah. He can so, come with a beard with Yeah, and, and, and right now his uh, pepper hair, which is taken yeah. off, like, you know, in big style. Yeah. And, and actress Trisha? Trisha, well, uh, Trisha, I've been shooting with her right from school, in the sense oh. that right from she was in 11th and 12th, she used to model. Yeah. Uh, there are days when she's come to the studio in a pinafore, then she does some shoots. <laughs> so I've known her for years and she's been a... Uh, like that. I've seen people grow, evolve, evolve yeah. and grow yeah. and, uh, and uh, into a fine uh, lady and she's such a uh, uh, good friend too. And over the years, she's, she's sustained herself, that is very important. That's true. Uh, especially for a heroine to, to sustain for in so an industry long. for so long. It's not easy. And also I read somewhere that uh, it's very nice of you to say that you love working with people who are nobody, people who are just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you like to do mm -hmm. the first portfolio mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff like that mm -hmm. because of the passion that you have for photography. Yeah, because like people like uh, like uh, Samantha, she also happened to come in the studio years back. I mean, yeah. nobody. Nobody, yeah, nobody. So then she started doing ads and stuff, she did a portfolio, then you know, slowly she, she also, yeah, it's all a lot of hard work, hard work and, yeah. and luck and everything put together and, and, and you're rejected so many times for movies, you feel dejected but you come back again and, and it's happy to see them doing so well right now. Amazing. Yeah. What gives Venkat a kick? 
<laughs> seeing nobody becoming somebody one day. Wonderful. <laughs> and from the day that you held the camera, mm. uh, left your engineering, yeah. and today when you're sitting here, when you look back the journey, mm. are you happy now with the way that your life has turned out? I'm very happy. <laughs> Satisfied? I'm very happy. <laughs> Couldn't have been better, I feel. That's what my, I always feel. Amazing. More wishes, uh, Thank more you so much. success Thank you. and more power. Thank you for Thank taking time and coming. Thank you so much. Your thoughts pleasure. on being on the show? I enjoyed it. And uh, we, we yeah. were all very skeptical in <laughs> okay. you know, the technicalities <laughs> and the art of it. Okay, but, but the thing is, um, I mean, you're doing a fantastic job as far as Thank you. cancer awareness is concerned. And that's a frightening thing which is looming really big all around and it's nice that you, 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 you've taken this up, this particular project where you're trying to highlight it and I wish you all the very best and as much as you can reach out to people yeah. and, and you know and, and, and convey to them this kind of awareness is really important and I wish you all the best in your endeavor. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Uh, a small token of appreciation oh, great. taking your time and coming. Our gifting partners P and Ram. Thank you so much. I hope thank you like you. it. <laughs> thank you so much. Hi, this is Venkat Ram here. If you like this show, Talk with Vinay, I'd request you to subscribe to this. And wishing you all the very best. Thank you. When we did the first ad for Pepsi in Chennai, uh, for a small ad, that's when Aishwarya, she had won the Miss Femina and she had come here for the Pepsi shoot. So at that point of time, you never ever realized that she would yeah, be. Yeah, she would be. <laughs> so that's what happens with most of them.